So this video is to show you how to install a CISS kit in a Workforce 7710. Uh, there's also 7720, uh, 7610, they're all very similar. So the idea will be the same. It might be a little bit different, but, but basically it's the same. So this is on the 7710. Here's the kit and here are the accessories that come with the kit. First thing you're gonna do is remove the tape. We ship it with, uh, with tape over these so that nothing happens during, during shipping. And then you're gonna open these up. Open them slowly because we ship this completely full. So when you open these up, ink might jump out. So just open them slowly. You might wanna have a paper towel or, and or gloves on. All right, but the first thing you're gonna do is open all four. In your little accessory bag, you'll have four air filters, like this. So all these do is keep the dust from falling in. This will work if you just leave them open like this, but then you would have to close them when you're done so that dust doesn't get into your ink. If you use these air filters, you can just leave them on all the time. You don't have to worry about closing it and opening them. If you get ink inside the air filter, you will want to remove them and soak them in water to let that ink dissolve. Uh, if that ink dries, it won't let air in. And these, are, these air vents require air pressure for the ink to come out of the cartridge. So you'll want all four air filters installed. There is a wider end and a narrower end. The wider end goes in, goes down. And there are a lot of install videos on YouTube. Uh, this is the way I install it, and this is the way we, we install into our printers when, um, when we ship them. But there are other ways, so I'm just gonna show you my, my technique. First thing I do is open up the top of the printer. The carriage is gonna relocate itself, so that it is over here on the right side. I open this up, and right here, you can see there's a little there's this little piece holding this. I just pull this out to the side and pop this out. I don't use this. All right. So you can trash it. You can do whatever you want with it. We're not going to use it. This particular kit, this is a new kit, does no does no longer require a battery. Uh, if you have like a seventy six ten, that's a slightly different kit. And that one will have a battery. Install is almost exactly the same except for that difference. You're going to pop. I push down on these rubber stoppers, put pressure here. I'm going to pop each one of these in until it clicks. Down and push here. Two, three, four. Make sure they all click. Go ahead and put some force on there and we're good. And then I, I push down on these. They all clicked. We're good. Now for the ink line, you want the ink line to come out straight out. It's going to do a bend like this and come out right here. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to use this piece and we're going to tape it right here where we're going to, yeah. So the end of this piece is going to be slightly off from this end right here. You don't want to cover this hole, this area right here. You can't cover that because that's where this goes down and, and it latches in. So just right there. Basically where this line is centered with this screw right here. See this line is going to center right with that screw. That's exactly where you want it. You'll remove the backing from the double sided tape. And there we go. Stick that on firmly, ink line, slide it all the way in. You'll want to leave a little bit of slack, just like that, because this carriage has moved over to the left a little bit. It still goes further right. You don't want this too loose or too tight. If it is either one of those, if it's too loose or too tight, you'll get a paper jam error. Because the carriage, when it moves left and right, 
it's going to get caught on the line. And the paper jam error is actually a generic error. It doesn't really mean that there's paper jammed. It means that the that the carriage got stuck on something or something got stuck. So if that if you get that error paper jam, your ink line is either too tight or too loose. So I leave a little bit just like that and a little less than half an inch of slack right there. And then I get one of these clips and we're gonna go over here. We're gonna clip this down right here. And that's it. That's really all you have to do. At this point, you just close the cover and it's going to start initializing as you can see on the screen. There it goes. If you get any sort of message, um, there's initialization. If you get any sort of message where it doesn't recognize a cartridge, all you have to do at that point is lift the cover, press the, the little white button. I'll show you the button right now, I'll lift the cover. I'm gonna, there's a small white button right there. You wanna press that white button and then close the cover again. That's all you gotta do. That's it, this will take about, says six minutes to run. And as soon as you're done with that, I would run a full cleaning, one, one full cleaning. And you have to install the Epson drivers. Do not forget to do that. Do not use plug and play drivers. Do not use any built-in drivers. You have to use the official Epson drivers those have the ICC profile uh, for these inks. We use the official Epson ICC for, for our inks. Oh, and there's a, that, I'm glad that came up. So what you do is you open, press the white button, like I said, close it, and then we should get a message saying that these are not genuine inks and if, I, if we want to proceed. So let's see if that message comes up. There it is. You have not installed Genuine Epson. That's good. Press OK and we're going to proceed. Continue using the ink? Yes. And that's it. The only other times that you should get that is when the printer thinks it's low on ink. Remember the printer doesn't know that you've attached the CISS kit to it. It just thinks these are regular cartridges so when it uh, feels that that you've printed enough pages to where you're almost out of ink, it will give you an out of ink warning. Again, you open the top, press the white button, that resets the chip and you're good to go. All right, thank you very much for watching this video and uh, if you have any questions, please message us either through Etsy or eBay. Thank you.